All right. <laughs> and um, you know, when it, when it presented the project to me, you know, my initial reaction was like, "What an idiotic idea!" You know. <laughs> but let me read the material. So, um, you know, script was horrendous. <laughs> you know, the Seagull, not, not the Seagull movie. Um, uh, Maybe the second movie. Phil Coughlin. Yeah, the Phil Coughlin movie. I was like, all I remembered was the last shot of it, right? <laughs> and then I read the original screenplay, uh, the original story, and it was off the fucking hook, man. I mean, off the absolute fucking hook. So um, I said, oh, okay, we'll try this. <laughs> On top of it, it was a war, you know, it was a studio movie. We're getting like a shitload of fucking money. It always it always comes at the right time when you're broke. <laughs> so, so wow. Yeah. Okay, how would they take that? But I would have held that off. I would have said, no, this is ridiculous. The third version of this movie, the script is ridiculous. Who wrote it? Did it? Another no, couple of guys. I don't know. No, those two guys. They're all big horror show guys. Horror Larry show. Cohen. Yeah, Stuart Gordon knows the knuckle. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the fucking bad news bears. <laughs> I mean, they totally missed the point. I mean, the, the, the short story was off the fucking hook. Basically, about a world gone wrong, and now from outside the realm, people were going to come, like, to bring us the good news. Basically, Martians as saviors. I never got that point across to anybody. <laughs> I mean, I, I tried that. In LA, that's, that, that idea goes, hey, dude, keep that to yourself. <laughs> the Martians are, you know, come on. Did you get movies when you were a kid? The Martians are the bad guys. The human beings are the good guys. All right, so I'm trying to figure out how to figure that idea out. Anyway, um, so I saw Siegel's movie about 500 times, which is a masterpiece. I mean, it's a brilliant, brilliant, Brilliant movie. Even though that movie was totally recut, you know the whole beginning that was never there. The whole all that soundtrack got na 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 na. He had nothing to do with that. That movie starts with a train coming into the station, which is the coolest fucking idea and an absolute brilliant thing. Not that maniac. Hey, they're coming! 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 They're Nah, fuck you, dude. Give away the whole fucking movie. I mean, we'll still go through this now. Why don't, you, why don't you give away the end of the movie in the first five seconds? Well, maybe the audience would like to discover for themselves. Fuck them. They don't even want to watch the movie. They're not totally there because we talked them into coming. But, you know, when you think about how Siegel, there was one camera. I'm in a camera the size of a washing machine, no Don, no everything, the whole movie of it. I actually got to like the uh, Kaufman movie too after a couple of thousand screens. <laughs> <laughs> I never did. He never did. Anyway, so Tony, we worked, this is the film we worked in the studio system, excuse me, in the studio system, and um, I mean, I'm very proud of this film. It was a nightmare. The shooting it was absolutely a fucking nightmare. The last, the last five films we. It took us longer to shoot this film than the last five films I've made, okay? We shot like 65 days, 18 hours a day, six days a week. I mean, it was like last man standing, you know, thousands of extras. It was like, I think this was the end of our Hollywood career. It was. Because <laughs> <laughs> I quit this job every day. This was like a real Warner Brothers, you know, they would say, you with the family. I says, well, I got my own dysfunctional family. I don't want to be in this family. Right? Okay. And they were making Malcolm X, and they hated Spike, and they were making JFK, and they were dis despised Oliver Stone. But they were terrified of Oliver Stone. They were scared of the publicity of Spike Lee, so they took it all out on us. <laughs> <laughs> These guys, we got kicked their ass. They got all our resentment against the other two guys and sent them home. They never, and they never worked with New York filmmakers again. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so, but... So. Uh, what, what, he, what he didn't tell you was, but I, 
<laughs> we squeaked in another little film uh, during the pre-production uh, during the pre-production of this movie. Money, I paid yeah, <laughs> during a rewrite of uh, Body Snatchers, we cranked out uh, Bad Lieutenant. <laughs> and, uh, so, so here's the wacky part. I said. I read that script, you know, which is like about 30 pages long, and, 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 I, and I said, and he says, we're going to make this while we're doing a little rewrite on uh, Body Snatchers. I said, listen, man, if we lose out on the big payday for this, uh, this fucking movie, I'm going to kill you. And, and then his wife, his then wife said, and I'll kill you too. So they stretched that out for a month. That's about how long it took to make uh, you know, the bad lieutenant, you know, they, they, we did that in a month, we cut it in a week, we did the uh, dub in, in four days, and I got down to Alabama, and um, they'd been shooting for like three days, okay? In three days, they were already two days behind schedule. <laughs> and that's when they wanted to fire everybody. I get down there, and there's a revolution going on. And I'm going, holy shit, I just got here, and I'm already, my job is like hanging by a thread. <laughs> you know, and this was going to be a good payday. I mean, I, I'm a bad lieutenant, you know, the, uh, the one, one million dollar film, you know, it's like I paid them, you know. Now, now <laughs> we're going to get a good payday. And there, we haven't had a lot of those, okay, folks? I just want to let you know. <laughs> There's been maybe two. And, uh, and this, you, know, you, know, you don't get rich working with... With Abel Ferraro, right? <laughs> you gotta love it. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, uh, so we we managed to survive somehow. But uh, uh, the studio was all was all over this film, and and some of you may have heard of uh, Dee Dee Allen, mm. who's a very very I famous. No, no, she's the greatest. I, I mean, I, I loved her, but you know, genius with somebody else. Yeah. Well, anyway, Abel never had the opportunity to meet her because she comes in. You know, she was like the mother cutter over at Warner Brothers in those days. Yeah, yeah. She was. She was on the top of all of them. You know. I mean, and she's a you know salty old dame, and you know she was quite fabulous. Anyway, uh, so so now it's time for the studio to get their meat hooks into this film, right? And she said, um, okay, she comes to the office, I'm there in the cutting room over at the old Warner Brothers lot in Hollywood, the old Hollywood lot, which is the old Goldwyn lot. And she says, oh, when's Abel come in? I, and I said, oh, he's not coming in, did he? She said, what are you talking about? Where is he? I said, well, right about now, he's about one mile above us on his way back to New York. So it's just you and me, honey. And that's the way it was. It was just her and I and me basically trying to keep true to Abel's vision, you know, over you know, over the desires of Warner Brothers who are really were really intrusive on this. Um, I guess let me, let me just say one thing. Okay. Just <laughs> <laughs> remind me of something. Okay. No, so anyway, so we got we got my cut and this chick comes in, I'm ready to play a seven year old chick like, hey ladies, you know, I know you did a great job with Reds, but you know <laughs> Okay. So the studio was very interested and very into it, and they wanted to know progress reports of where we were, and they're looking at screenings. And every time we did a screening, we have a, have a do do two hundred fifty thousand dollars sound mix. I mean, it was like, you know, we spent a shitload of fucking money. I mean, like, we did more money on a on a sound mix we didn't even use than we spent on the lieutenant. Okay. And no expenses paid, flying around first class, all this shit, right? Getting us all fucked up out of our minds <laughs> in Hollywood with all this money we shouldn't have. <laughs> and then they were going to have an audience reaction screening, okay? So imagine something like this, twice as big, some dick town in the middle of fucking the valley somewhere <laughs> with a bunch of 16-year-old kids. Yeah. And the studio, oh, here's my big director right here. What are you doing here? Watching. Oh, great. <laughs> you guys know here, introduce yourself. This is my director. I'm his, I'm his best actor. <laughs> and he needs money for his new film, so anybody here want to look like anybody here with no money? <laughs> 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 
right now. Yeah, we got to kick start. Spike, <laughs> once, Spike Lee, once Spike Lee shakes that fucking situation down, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll be the next in line. Right. So, um, all right, so they're going to have a big audience screen at Hedrick Studio there. Because, oh you know, they got the Fugitive. I've never got And my guy's going, that Fugitive, they got it 92. Yeah. Screening, right? And I'm thinking, well, geez, last time we had one of these was Fair City, we got an 18. Fuck, <laughs> <laughs> he says, you know, we don't have to get a 92, but we got to make a good show. And I said, I think we can do good because this guy, you, you'll see this movie, he's got every dopey ass all you know, kids and fucking families and all this <laughs> well, I know we got kids, Martians, helicopters, families. <laughs> anyway. We get a 36, okay? And that was the last I have seen these executives. And that's the last they made any comments on a film. Like, uh, Terry Summer, we got these big shot guys. They like looked at me like I was like, I had leprosy or something. They go, very good film, man. <laughs> so the next day, I'm looking at all these comments. This is the best thing, because this is how they make films. You look at a film like this, ask all the questions, everybody makes their comments, and then you recut the film around the comments of a 16-year-old ecstasy fucking head. <laughs> you know, who showed up on a fucking uh, skateboard. <laughs> that kid is not cutting your friend. They don't think I'm kidding, man. They go, okay. So they say, they're from the the guy, who is that? Bruce Berman. Bruce Berman. He's going, Abel, you know, that screening last night cost $50,000, and I don't think you were very attentive. I says, hey, I read, you didn't even read the notes. I says, dude, I read the notes. I read every fucking note. The 25 classic, you know, the fucking mall head motherfuckers who they captured. I don't know why they picked these 25, right, to write. Hey, yo, what'd you learn? I says, what did I learn? There's 70 different ways to spell suspense. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite is the S-U-S. Another two words, S-U-S. <laughs> P-E-N-Z-E. -E. <laughs> and I crossed out three times. Like, I really fucking throw it back. The other thing was like, suspense. S-U-S-S-S. -S -S. I said, one take 50,000 TC's motherfuckers out of read. <laughs> I'm going to ask them to cut, to cut my motherfucking film. <laughs> Enjoy the movie.